new topic in design. So what the old topics? The old topics we are designing our member under the effect of bending moment only. Just go back one more semester. Last semester we talked about structure analysis. We have external forces. These external forces will create in your structure internal forces like axial force diagram, bending moment diagram, shear force diagram. We will talk this semester about <coughs> something new. It's not common in a structure, but we need to understand it. Torsion. What we covered until now in this course, bending moment. We covered many different situations. If your beam without reinforcement and you know your M ultimate, I can tell you how much is the reinforcement. We did. Also we covered, if you have your cross section with the steering reinforcement, I can tell you, hey, this cross section, the, bending, the design bending moment fail MN equal a number. And I can make a comparison between M ultimate from structure analysis and your design moment and must be smaller than or equal. Also, we covered if your steering reinforcement, I'm sorry, if your cross section with double steering reinforcement and we learned how to get your design bending moment. This happened. And also we learned if your cross section is a T section, because your beam is a bar of a slab most of the time. All of our situations like this. Your beam is a bar of concrete slab. So we learned how to get your design bending moment. That's right. All of these topics we are talking about only one internal forces bending moment for different cases of your beam today or this week we will start to talk about shear force and torsion both of them what will happen if you have shear force and torsion first of all to resist your bending moment, we need longitudinal reinforcement. Maybe in tension only, maybe in tension and the compression, both of them at the same time, like this case. But if you are talking about bending moment in your beam, we are talking about longitudinal reinforcement. But if you are talking about shear force or torsion mainly, you are talking about something called stirrups. Can you see this shape? This shape mainly called transverse reinforcement. This reinforcement called longitudinal reinforcement. If you are talking or, or if you found this word longitudinal reinforcement means this reinforcement responsible to resist bending moment. If we are talking about something called transverse reinforcement or shear reinforcement, we are talking about steel reinforcement to resist your shear force and torsion. Mainly, this transverse reinforcement called stirrups. Stirrups, like this. In some case, your transverse reinforcement, something like this. Longitudinal reinforcement bent, like this. two or more of your longitudinal reinforcement can be bent like this with uh, angle 45 degree near your support or your column. This shape of reinforcement 
is responsible also to resist sheer force, some case torture. But in our course, we will talk mainly about stirrups. This reinforcement called stirrups. So, at the first part in this course, we talked about longitudinal reinforcement to resist the moment. Today, we will talk about stirrups to resist sheer force and torsion. Any questions so far? After we are done with sheer force and torsion, we will start to design column. You have axial force, compressed axial force. Then we are done, we will go through foundation, footing, and retaining wall. Anyway, like we did before, we have something called Vn, which is called nominal or theoretical shear strength of reinforced concrete member. And your nominal uh, shear strength consists of two parts. The first part, contribution from concrete. The second part, contribution from transverse reinforcement or from stirrups. So to resist your shear, we have two contributions, one from concrete, one from steel, like we did in bending. Do you remember we have two contributions, one, one from steel and one from concrete? Do you think we did? Yes. Do you remember we have stress distribution like this? We have compressor force C, we have tensile force T. T and C will make your design bending moment. That means we have two contributions, one from concrete above your neutral axis and one from steel below your neutral axis. Here also for shear, we have two contributions, one from concrete, one from steel. So your nominal shear strength is two bars, VC bar resisted by concrete, VS bar resisted by shear reinforcement or transver transverse reinforcement or stirrups. Actually, we will not design for Vn. We are looking for design shear strength, so we need to add something to Vn. Anybody remember what we need to add? V. v. Yes. So, the design shear strength of a member will be phi Vn equal phi Vc plus phi Vs, which must at least equal the factor shear force to be taken. Our design philosophy, your factored shear force, which is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 life load, and coming from shear force diagram, your factored load must be smaller than or equal your design shear strength. Our design philosophy, your design, your factor, the load, must be smaller than or equal your design load. Phi for bending was equal 0.9 or based on what is the, the strain in reinforcement, but most of the time 0.9. In shear, no, your fail for shear or torsion, 0.75, based on ACR. Okay, that's fine. I can understand what you are talking about. That makes sense for me. We have something called uh, nominal shear. If you add fail, you can get your design shear strength. Fail, in this case, 0.75. Uh, go back a little bit. You told us <coughs> VN two parts, one for shear, uh, one from concrete, one from steel. The part from concrete, VC, according to ACI, equal B web. Move this W down a little bit. B web depth 
prime square root of FC prime. Your cross section, something like this. Your B width, width of your cross section, your depth from steel reinforcement to the top, and square root of FC prime characteristic strength of concrete. From this term, you can figure out what is the contribution from concrete in this equation. We have another term from steel or from stirrups, Vs. Vs according to ACI equal AV, F yield, D over S. Wait a moment. Yeah, I can figure out what is the term F yield, yielding stress. What is the term D, your depth? That's fine. What you mean by AV and S? S is the spacing between stirrups. Between this stirrup and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, we have equal distance. This distance called S. S spacing between stirrups. AV is the cross section area of the stirrups legs. I'm sorry. Uh, do you see these stirrups? This one. How many leg? This bar called leg. This bar called leg. So how many legs? Two. 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 The cross section area of one leg times two, you can get area B. So, if you're steer up from steel number three, what is the area B? Your steer up number four, what is the area B? Your steer up something looks like this. Maybe sometimes this will happen. Number three, what is the area B equal? Number three, cross section area of number three point eleven inch square. How many legs do you have? One, two. So area V equal two time time what? Point eleven equal point twenty two. Number four, still number four, your area point two inch square. How many legs do you have? So 2 times 0.2 equal 0.4 inches squared, area B. If you have stirrups for any reason, looks like this one. How many legs do you have? Three. The area of one leg, which is number 3, bar equal 0.11, so your value of AV will be 0.33 inches squared. So, AV is the total area of the stirrup legs. Remember, legs. <coughs> S is the spacing between stirrups. So, if you have cross section given, and you have your stirrups in your cross section given, and you know everything about the stirrups, the spacing and diameter and everything, I can tell you what is the design shear strength. How? Go ahead and get the part from concrete. Go ahead and get the part from stirrups. Both of them, add them together, you can get your Vn. Multiply your Vn by phi, you can get your design shear strength. You are done. That's all. I think we have problem like this. On the AV? <laughs> no, on the homework.
you have a problem, I think first problem in your homework, you have cross section is given and ask, uh, asking for what is the design shear strength. So your cross section will be given like this. We have cross section. We have something inside. Here. Maybe this value will be given 12 inch. Your depth will be given 26 inch. And he will say, hey, this stirrups number 3 at 15 inch. What is the design shear strength for this cross section? Okay, we have two parts. If we go back, we have two parts. V contribution from concrete, go ahead and calculate it. VC equal to B web depth square root of C prime. I think everything is given. B web. Dip FC prime VS equal AV F yield depth over S. Okay, F yield is given, your depth is given. What is the spacing between stirrups? Yes, we have stirrups from steel number three every 15 inch. So your S is given, and your AV, go ahead. Your, how many legs do you have? Two. What is the area of one leg? Number 3.11. So 2 times 0.11, you can get your AV. Yeah. You can get VS. Add VS plus VC, you can get your nominal shear. Fail time VN, you can get your design shear. Very simple problem. Doctor, okay? Yeah. Dr. Freeman, uh, do we care what the... Uh, are we only worried about what the faces look like, how many legs they have? But like the top part, sometimes you got hooks. No, I don't care. Like this one? 